Gadget UK here again. Um, let's see if we can get to the bottom of the problems with this uh, 1084S monitor. So in the last part, I mentioned I was going to swap out a uh, cap down here. I think that was one microfarad, 250 volts or something, and we had a, a 4.7. Uh, I think that was 160 volts. I can't remember. It might be another 250 volts. Uh, I can check that in a minute. But yeah, bipolar. So as you can see, I just joined two caps together there, joined the negatives and put the positives through um, on the board. So I'll probably remove this because it's just the same. Still got the same frequency issue. And we've still got the same issue where you first switch it on, you get uh, what looks like to be missing blue, um, I think. Uh, and the blue seems to just come off its own accord after maybe, I don't know, two or three minutes. Uh, so, you know, we could be in the realms of something going on, on the, the neck body. It could be the tube. I'm just wondering if there's a problem with the blue gun. I hope to God there isn't. This is one of the problems we get when you've got a, a, a set of you know symptoms like I had with this right from the start, where there were quite a few caps, and I, I don't think all the caps needed replaced. All the ones I've done, I'm pretty sure I'll, I've still got them. I'll get around to checking them on my ESR meter at some point. I also swapped out the uh, two. In fact, I need to put the green dots on. Can you see the two down here? Two 22 microfarad. Um, 50 volt, I think they were, swap those out. So, you know, again, not had any bearing on the colour issue or the initial, you know, the frequency. It could even be frame, it looks like maybe the frame is just partially collapsing just as it warms up. So, you know, we could still have uh, something going on down here, and I'm not ruling out that resistor. If you remember, we found the resistor with some, um, you know, the, it starts, the glue had started to um, conduct. Could be that resistor down there, so I'm just going to pay close attention to that, and I might just do the temperature te the temperature thing again. You know, get some freezer spray on it, see if we can uh, narrow down the area. But I'm suspecting it. You know, it's going to be something around here again, uh, or something uh, down, you know, uh, down here related to the uh, vertical deflection I see. Um, and there are still quite a lot of caps around there that haven't been swapped out, so it could still be a cap around there. Uh, but I'm also going to swap out, I've got a replacement for this cap here, and I'll probably remove these as well. So I'll do those three, I think, probably next, and we'll just retest, and then I'll do some of the other stuff to do with cooling and stuff, um, to see if we can identify, uh, you know, a cause. And the other thing uh, I was thinking of doing on the last video, and I just haven't had a chance to do it yet, is can you see where the colour inputs come here? You can see they've got heat shrink around them that correspond to the colour, so we've got blue, green, and red. So what I could do... Um, what I think I might do is, you know, if those caps on the baseboard don't have any effect there, is and I've checked the transistors, that's another point to make, I've checked the main transistors and the smaller ones uh, and the resistors and things that feed those transistors, I can't find anything on there, but I could have missed something, I've not checked every single component on there. Um, but yeah, I could swap the, uh, you know, take this connect, pull, unplug this connector from the board here and swap uh, maybe blue and green. Um, so if the tube was okay, um, what I'd expect to see is, uh, so I think about this, it's always one of these funny ones where you start swapping colours around, you start thinking, what colour am I expected to see on the tube? What I want to be able to try and do is drive the blue gun uh, using the green uh, input, because we know the green input seems to be okay. If we see blue on the tube, that's a good indication that maybe the fault is not related, I think, thinking about this, not related to the base the base or the tube and it's possibly something on here um, I mean there's very little going on I'm guessing this produ produces the RGB um, outputs um, there so I've checked some of the resistors and stuff around there there are some transistors can you see down here we could have a dry joint there that I might have missed we've also got three caps here can you see that uh, are those RGB that gets fed through to the tube or is that for the input because we're near the back here so yeah, I'd be more inclined to think your inputs are going to be coupled through these here. Um, I'm also not sure about the green screen thing, because if you remember that previous video, I found that when you switch the green screen off and on, the colours could come back for a second and then the blue, you know, the blue would come back and they would just fade out, which led me to think there's something going on with the green screen option, you know, the green screen function. Um, now I looked for some schematics, I think the nearest I found was for a D2 model, now I'm not sure how that deviates from this one, um, and that showed a diode on each of the, um, I think the red and the blue guns, um, as part of that switch, when you switch, you switch between green screen and colour, I think it basically uh, toggled between, I think, 12 volts and ground on the anode of two diodes that get fed into the uh, red and the blue. So uh, 
those yeah well, it could be a problem with the, the diode related to the blue maybe but uh, I doubt it um, but I couldn't really see anything there that might cause the this, this, this you know the symptoms we're seeing so it is a bit of an odd one um, you know it, it could be something on here this temperature uh, you know sensitive like you know I've measured things and they seem okay transistor similar I'm just wondering if when you switch it on it starts to, you know as soon as it gets a bit of load there suddenly something's changing and until it's warmed up fully um, we've got a problem but so yeah right now I'll swap out these three caps and let's just see see what happens so the exact same problem after swapping out all three of those caps on the uh, tube baseboard so uh, I'm going to try and swap the colours around on the inputs so the end two colours I'm going to swap blue and green um, We've just got, I think we've got a ground for each one and then the, the colour could be the other way around um, but yeah if I just stick to the colour designation of white black white black and just flip them uh, and I think the easiest way to do that is just to gently it's been a while since I've done one of these it's like a JST type connector isn't it just gently use like a pen or something just to lift the plastic part and if you pull the wire at the same time Sorry, not easy to, to do and film. There you go, can you see that's come out? Uh, and just pay attention to which way it goes. There's a little notch here stuck up that hooks onto the uh, you know the inside of that plastic part. And I can just swap those around. So all done, swap blue and green round. We'll just connect this back up. Uh, and what we're testing for here, you know, we'll have swap the inputs. So uh, what was green before in terms of uh, being driven from the board is now going to be blue and vice versa. Um, so if we see blue as a predominant colour on the screen, um, that's a clue that it's going to be the impulse, you know, it's the, the signals that are coming from, uh, from here rather than something up here. Well, that's the theory. That's, yeah, I think that'll be right. So let's just uh, connect it back up and retry it. Yeah, there we go, mission accomplished in terms of a diagnosis there. Can you see it's like a purple sort of colour now? So I think we've, we've got a combination of blue and red there, which shows it's actually a problem on the input rather than on the uh, you know, the tube base. It's nothing to do with transistors and components and things there, the passives that are driving the, the guns. It's uh, something on the input. So if you swap them around that way, something you want to be careful of, you don't want to damage the connector, you can see it's gone back together okay there. Um, you know, you can bend the little metal clips up with a, a pin head before you stick them back in just to make sure that you've got maximum area there for it to clip on. And also, just press down on these when it's, you know, on the little plastic bits there when it's firmly pushed back in. Just make sure you've got a, a nice good fit. Um, but the other way of achieving the same thing is obviously if you follow these wires they come up to here, can you see, in pairs so you could just desolder them and resolder them there but to be honest with the cable ties and all that sort of stuff I find it just easier just to do that, it's kind of a bit non-intrusive and if you're careful you won't damage the connector and it's the sort of thing you're only ever going to need to do really once or twice in a monitor's lifetime really you might not even need to do that, if you've got the scope on there I might be able to I would have, that would have been a clue, that's the other thing uh, but as I mentioned in the previous video, I don't really like connecting my scope up to things like this. Um, there were some really helpful comments there in the, uh, that previous video. I think, uh, was it Dave Allum? Um, I forget his name, I'll put it up here. But, and I'll mention a whole bunch of the other people towards the back end of this video in the credits perhaps, just to say thanks to all the people that have contributed with so many messages to do with safety and some of the other things to do with the operations of these and you know explaining things that I perhaps wasn't clear enough on. Um, yeah, I don't use my scope on things like this, uh, but if I use an isolation transformer, you're isolating the, the earth of your scope. Um, so, yeah, and as I say, Dave uh, posted a quite a detailed explanation um, of uh, why you need to do that. So the next thing I need to do is, uh, is try and work out why the blue feed is low for a period of time. Um, and it's, you know, it's temperature related, so I don't know, we've got this chip here. Um, we're feeding a composite input, so there's going to be a chip down, I don't know whether it's that chip down there that's going to be, it's probably not, it's probably going to be, comp I might just look at the pinout of this chip here before I do anything else, this TDA3507, just to see what it works, how it works, you know, you know what the pinout is rather. Um, and then I can just do some connectivity tests and things around here, measure some of these resistors. I think I've checked the blocker resistors there, there's like two Pair, sorry, can't quite see that. Two pairs of resistors um, just down here. Um, those are all all right. Some transistors. We could have a glitchy transistor. Um, more resistors here, and again, they look to be in 
uh, you know triplets there's three there there's three of those there's three of those there's three of those so there's a, a number of resistors and three here there's a number of resistors there that could be part of the issue as I suspect like I say I think these feed the inputs um, I'm just wondering if one of these caps is, is, is sort of shorted or something like that I don't know I'm guessing these are going to be coupling caps so you wouldn't expect those to cause any problem on the input and you would expect the input needing to be switched onto RGB for those to even have any sort of effect on the uh, signal but thinking about this this is generating RGB out this is an RGB in it could just be that this is coupled so it, it could be a problem with the input because the input's not going to be processed in any way as far as I understand the sink will be the sink's probably going to pass through these here maybe um, but I'm guessing the RGB is just going to go potentially straight through um, I'm not that hot on the theory side of this sort of stuff so I'm not sure but anyway well, before we do anything like that I'll look at the, the pinouts of this chip here TDA3507 so looking at the data sheet briefly here for the TDA3507 I was just looking for pinout the nearest you can get is this little example circuit you've got um, RGB inputs here um, so in my case I'm not going to be using those I don't think unless they, they might be coming from somewhere else there on the, the chip that's doing the PAL conversion uh, sorry the, yeah the PAL composite conversion I don't see um, composite input it looks like it's just RGB um, sandcastle pulse there that's, I can't remember what the sandcastle pulse is used for um, what else have we got yeah um, these look the bias RGB bias um, here so I've checked that the pots and things are all okay there um, and then you've just got these outputs you know in this example here they're going via 180 ohm resistors to you know an example circuit up here to drive uh, your guns uh, presumably um, so it's not really telling me anything other than the pinouts here for the um, the RGB uh, outputs, and I think I've looked at those already. I think there's a, it's not they're not shown here, but I think there's a, a couple of um, tantalums or something um, on the board there that I'll perhaps have a look at in a minute, and a load of resistors, and it's like two lots of um, resistors for each colour, and those look to be related to the output there that goes to the neck of the uh, you know tube base there. So um, at least I've got the pinouts there. That's useful. So you might not be able to see this, but I've spotted some shit actually around uh, this little orange component here. I think it's a cap, I'm not sure the... Yeah, the, the... No, maybe it's not. The marking there on the board, I can't really read it on the silk screen, but it's got a weird um, component symbol, I'm not sure what that is. And there's two of them. Um, yeah, but it's just just here. It's like some sticky residue or something. I wonder if this cap's failed, or I wonder if it's just some more of that glue that's just got there. As you can see there's a bit of a streak across here, there's a chance maybe a little blob's just gone down there. So I'm going to wipe that up, but one of the other things you can do here, obviously you know, you've got sets of, let's say, three of these components, three resistors, blocks of threes, threes cap, three caps, so you could do component swaps, obviously, you could measure things. This side's probably safer to measure on a scope, actually, because it's, uh, well, I think so, it's probably going to be a reference to uh, ground and stuff. Certainly on a digital multimeter, the output's here, I think, probably fairly low voltages, I would think. Um, but you can, let's say, compare measurements as well. Measure between, say, the base and collector for each of these transistors, and you know the collector to emitter in both directions, etc. On the, the multimeter, and you can compare, and that could, in, you know, help you narrow down. If you just to get, start to get a different reading on the blue somewhere in the circuit, there, you could then backtrack and just, you know measure individual components, check the resistors, uh, and and find the fault that way. But yeah, right now I'm just going to clean that up there, and then maybe just see, work out what kind of component that actually is. So I could be barking up the wrong tree here, but I just watch what happens when you switch the colour off or not. Um, do you see that we had a bit of blue there? It just makes me think there's something wrong with the switch. Do you see that with blue? I'm just like pushing it in and out. It could just be a dirty switch, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I might just try to get some switch contact uh, cleaner into that switch and see that makes a difference but that is having an effect it's just not staying on so maybe it's not the switch the switch is just helping uh, work out the problem I think or assuming you know affecting the behavior so sorry it's quite hard to get the art angle on this can you see as I move the camera just watch can you see this black thing here coming in it's you know, it's obviously the way the LCD is capturing the CRT is so that there's none of that sort of stuff going on in real life this thing coming in here like as I say you can see it um, yeah you can see it in the corner here that's uh, yeah it's just a, an artifact of uh, 
filming the CRT, but can you see all the resistors that feed into it down there? And I did measure those, I'm sure they're okay. But um, I've just sprayed those and it went straight from a nice blue to instant green as soon as I sprayed those components there. Now, there are a couple of caps, those little orange things I think are caps and the green ones are caps. Could be one of those, I don't think so, because I did you know, directly target the resistors there. So um, I'm going to inspect them in a minute, just make sure the solder points are good on them and stuff. But I'm going to measure them. Um, I might just um, you know, swap <coughs> the red and the blue around or something, see if we then lose the red. Um, I'm mean, obviously measuring them is the obvious one, but I'm sure I've measured them and I'm sure they're okay. So I think they've just become heat sensitive or something. Um, at least I hope that's the case. I hope it's not the caps that are nearby or the, uh, the TDA chip. So as you can see, the blue is almost back, and did you see that? As you push in and out the green screen, it goes really intense, like the colour comes back significantly, and it just starts to fade a bit. Uh, but that's not right now, it's stable again. So I'm going to spray uh, those resistors again, just bear with me, um, and I will try and target just the resistors. Did you see that? That was literally, I'll show you here, just spraying there, just in the middle of those resistors there, so um, yeah, I think we've found a clue there. I think we've uh, so I can't go to that black bloody blob. Um, so the mysterious thing here is I removed the two orange caps. Uh, you might just be able to see they're missing from down there now. Can you see around the uh, TDA chip? The orange caps are not there. They're on the underside. And I swapped them around. So um, yeah. If it was one of them, I mean, I did re-flow them originally, and that didn't make a difference. Um, those do seem to be the thing that was ten temperature sensitive around that area. Um, it's just really strange how now all the colours are okay when you first switch it on. Um, I might need to just cool them down a bit. I'll just spray them with the freezer spray. I'll switch this off, turn it on its side, freeze them, and then just make sure that, that, that you know we don't have. Um, a temperature related issue there, but you can still see it flickering, we've still got what looks like a collapsing frame, did you see that line in the middle there? So we've still still got an issue there, but the colour issue looks um, like it could be those caps. I mean there was um, some stuff on the board, some contamination there around one of those caps. I did clean it all off um, and I did reflow it, it's, it was just the same and it was still temperature sensitive at that point. It's just weird how I've swapped them around and now it's alright, but it could be that the cap was still warm from being soldered. So uh, yeah, I'll, let's, I'll switch it off and freeze them and see what happens. Yeah, and after freezing them, can you see we've got a different colour scenario going on. So one of those caps is faulty. We've got like a purplish sort of tinge now instead of that green tinge we had before. Um, the green screen works alright, but look at that, see it's purple. And you can see how I was testing it there, just uh, soldered on the underside. Uh, but it just made it easy to swap them around because I wasn't 100% sure whether I'd got them mixed up again once I took them off. You know, I, I might in theory have been putting them back on in the same order I took them off, same positions. So um, I did it on that side just to assist um, easy removal and testing. But yeah, I'm not sure what these are. The, the, the capacitors look like maybe they could be tantalums or something. They've got a. Um, uh, um, a designation on them, a little line, you know, that points towards this side, you know, the front end of the chassis here, in terms of the, the where they were on the board. Um, but I'm just not sure about size. Uh, might have to see if I can find the service manual or something. So since the bipolar cap was all right, I've swapped it back. I've put the original bipolar one in there. I'd prefer to have an actual bipolar cap in there than the two caps that I had, as you saw previously. And as I say, the way I did that is just join the negatives together, and then the two positives, on the outsides, just go into the connections. Um, you've also got to um, double the size of the caps there. So I think uh, I'm trying to think. I used ten microfarad caps, two ten, two tens, and it halves. That's the way it works, it halves, you end up with uh, 5, which is as near as damn it I can get to 4.7. But anyway, so we put the original 4.7 in there. So I'll just demonstrate this problem with these uh, caps actually. I've ordered some 0.22 microfarad, I think 35 volts, uh, tantalums. Because um, I think that's what they are. I can't be 100% sure, uh, but they look like it to me. Because they've got a, you know, a negative uh, designation. It could be a positive. I don't know, I'll check that. Um, but yeah, I've switched this off and on. You'll see the colour, the blue should still be there, hopefully. See, we've got blue. Uh, I've switched it off. Just tilt this over. And 
just spray just there. Now I know I've sprayed the board, but you know, I have isolated and just focused on the caps at one point just to make sure. And swapping them around, like I say, I've got a difference in behaviour. Because it's red, a bit red there, that red. That's the issue. Uh, but now we've got yeah, the blues back again and stuff. But yeah, you can see it fading in and out there. And we've sort of got a bit of a green thing as well. So I think those, I'm going to swap all three of those caps because they seem to be. Certainly the one on the blue seems to be uh, the fault, and I've put the one back on the blue now actually. Um, so that's why it went green again. It's, uh, yeah, it did go a little bit red, but I think that's because it killed both of them down. Um, I'm sure that's what it is, the resistors there are fine. And I don't think it's the chip. It could be the chip, yeah, it could be that. Um, but I don't think so, and as you can see, colours are yeah, looking really good. Aside from the, the weird thing I'm going, getting on the capture there, they look pretty good. So as you can see, it looks great after swapping out that tantalum. So that has solved that problem. It was, uh, you know, and the, and the clue was that brown substance that was, uh, you know, leaked around it. Um, yeah, so I just swapped it out for a 0.22 microfarad 35 volt tantalum, and uh, yeah, it's fine. So next thing I need to do is look at the collapsed frame issue because we still got that when it's cold, it still flickers and you know collapses the frame. So as you can see, I swapped the two tantalums down there. Um, there is a third one here, uh, I might just do that one anyway, I think this one's for the, uh, a different colour, I'm not sure, red maybe. Um, but I've just worked out the um, final fault. If you remember in the first video I said spraying around that, uh, do you remember that resistor that had some um, glue that had leaked onto the resistor edge and it was like shorting between the resistor and the uh, heat sink? Uh, I thought, let's try cooling that resistor again, see if we can deal with the, you know, the collapsing frame. And lo and behold, I've desoldered it on one side and the pin seemed to just disappear from the other side of the board. And can you see what's happened? Uh, I might have to put you on macro. Um, I'll see how close I can get you. Yeah, you can just about see it there. Can you see the pin has come off the resistor? That's why it was intermittent. That resistor was just uh, barely making a connection due to that previous um, you know, uh, glue or whatever it was that had uh, you know, broken down and shorted to the heatsink. So that's the final piece of the puzzle here. Um, and I haven't needed to replace all the caps. You know, some of these small ones, they don't tend to go. You know, it depends on where they are. It depends you know, if they're next to heat sinks and things, or if this, you know, you've got high switching frequencies and things. Um, you know, those all sort of contribute to them dying, you know, with like going sort of um, high ESR, you know, acting as a resistor ultimately. But you can see all the ones down here, they've not been swapped. There's one there that has been swapped. These little ones, not problems at all. Um, and I did spend quite a while going around cooling various things, trying to pinpoint exactly where the problem was. And it, it was something was niggling away in the back of my mind, thinking, I'm sure when we sprayed that in the first video, the, the, the frequency issue, you know, the, the, the collapsed frame issue seemed to disappear. And lo and behold, just like I said, just after the in one pin and it disintegrating like that there you go that's the clue that's it you bet you anything that's the final component so I just need to um, try and pull that out without damaging the color bands on it so I can work out what size it is and there we go so yeah and you can see the end of it has just come off there uh, in theory you know you could <laughs> potentially attach a wire to the end of there you could scratch the end off a solder on but you might not get exactly the same resistance and it's just asking for trouble but I think hopefully the bands are still on there it looks like you might be missing a band I don't know it could be a bit tricky um, but uh, yeah I'll inspect that with a magnifier now and uh, replace it with something suitable hopefully yeah it's red purple orange so that's 27k and it's really small so I'm bound to have some slightly larger uh, quarter watt that will you know, fit in there, that's, that's tiny, that little thing. So I've not got any 27k resistors, I've got some 10k resistors here, I'm going to put uh, 3 in parallel to give me 30k, which is pretty near to 27k. Um, so yeah, putting them in series, uh, they add up like that, but if you put 2 in parallel, I'll show you, if I uh, measure, you on the scope on the meter there, uh, measure there to there, that'll be about 5k, can you see that? It's like halves it. You know, so two identical size resistors in parallel, you'll get half. Um, and the opposite thing happens with capacitors, which is interesting. So let's say you, you, know, you put two capacitors in parallel, um, the capacitance adds up, unlike the resistors where they've got to be in series to add up. And with capacitors in series, they behave the same way the resistors do when they're in parallel. Um, so yeah, that's a, something interesting if you're not aware. But um, what I'll do is I'll just put two of these up around the board like that, and then solder the other one across the top, just temporarily. I'm not going to show you because uh, you know when I pro replace it with a proper 27k, and I will do. Trust me, it's pretty dodgy leaving three resistors in a little series uh, network there. Um, but I figure I want to get this video wrapped up really, uh, and hopefully this is the final part now. Just get these resistors in, there and uh, hopefully I should be able to show you it working. 
So there you go, I'm gonna mount that. Uh, before you hit dislike, like I say, it's temporary. I've ordered a 27K resistor and I'll swap it out, but I just wanna prove that that's the final issue there to do with the uh, frame. So just measuring it in the circuit, it's about 27K, strangely enough, <laughs> even though it's 310K resistors. There's perhaps something else in parallel, but uh, yeah, it's not far off the mark, so uh, I'll power that up now and we'll give it a try. So, moment of truth, let's give it a go. And as you can see, straight on. Perfect. Sorry about that band. It's, like I say, it's an artifact of the way it captures on the camcorder here. But uh, yeah, perfect stable picture now. My colours are fine uh, from the uh, tantalum I swapped out earlier. So uh, yeah, I think we'll call that a uh, success. It's uh, the end of uh, another journey, really. Uh, I just need to just, like I say, swap out that 27k resistor when it arrives. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, I'm very pleased with, with the way this has turned out. It's you know had numerous issues from caps. We had a dry joint. We had that resistor that you've just seen. We had the tantalums. Um, other things I'll just mention while I'm here as well. I'll just switch this off. Um, I did reflow the solder on here. Took off a piece of heat shrink. Resoldered that because the, the symptoms were that, you know with the frame, um, and you can get bad solder joints there and on the connector. Uh, down there, you know, that I pointed out in the previous video, the, was it gone? Just down there um, for the um, horizontal and vertical um, deflection coils. Um, soldered underneath, cleaned up the connector just to make sure. And funnily enough, at that point, the um, vertical frame collapsing thing, you know, it was collapsing into the middle, it was a lot worse. It was almost like a permanent collapse frame. Um, and after it warmed up a bit, it started to spring back to life again. And that was the point when I went looking at that resistor. I thought it's got to be that resistor. Um, it can't be anything else because I checked everything else around there. So I just cleaning all the mucky marks and stuff off this now. It's, uh, it's come up quite clean. I can always retro bright it at some point, you know, because the front is a bit yellowed. There we go, all cleaned up, reassembled. Uh, working sweet, reliable. Um, comes on every time, you know, colours look good. Good contrast and stuff. Um, thanks for the support on the previous videos. I've had a, an awful lot of comments. Um, and I'll put a page of thanks up actually at the end of this video now. Um, just to thank some of the people, um, you know, with regards to comments with safety, common faults, uh, and just corrections and things to things I've said. But hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.